welcome to the first Chelsea Echo podcast. Uh, I think that was all recording then, so you can get to hear uh, when what we say when we're not talking about what we're doing. But yeah, this is episode one of the Chelsea Echo. Obviously, going through all your Chelsea news every single week, all that lovely stuff. I've got my co-hosts next to me. I've got Nico, which is basically, he, if you've seen The Godfather, he's basically my Tom Hagen. That's what Nico <laughs> is. And then we've got Mr. Mooch about or Mooch, Mooch, or Gary, or Simon, or, or Steve, or just Mooch. It's going. It's because Mooch is actually. <laughs> Who are you it? in the Godfather then? I don't know. Michael's wife. <laughs> 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 to, to be to be fair, to, I'm definitely not Marlon Brando. I'm not swap. That's my dad. My dad's Marlon Brando. Okay. He's Don Mario. That's what he's referred to in the in the regions of Royal Tunbridge Wells. But um, yeah, I mean, should we just should we just get into the football instead of talking about the Godfather, even though it's a great film? Whatever you want to do, mate. Cool. All right, then. So I think they want to listen to us talk about football rather than uh, 90s, 80s gangster or 90s, 90s gangster films. No, I think that part three no, was 92, wasn't it? And then no, part one was the 70s, wasn't it? It was 70... 1984. There we go. Part one? Oh, yeah. To be fair, Nico does do a movie podcast. Okay. So do you want to, do you want to plug it, Nico? Yeah, they thought that's a good tangent. Yeah, if you are movie fans, we're not going to talk about movies here, but if you are movie fans, check out the Movie Mount Rushmore podcast, new top 10 show every single weekend, brought to you by myself and the one AJ. That was actually a really smooth plug. My mm. father was 1972. Oh, dear. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not drinking because my mouth's dry at all. <laughs> well, um, let's go. Let, talk let's about... hope I know more about football. Yeah. Let's let's just go straight into let's it. Let's talk about football. Let's <laughs> obviously season has just ended. Obviously, as we record this, we're looking at potentially seeing the the fixture list released potentially within the next twenty minutes. Of, of it's of been leaked. Stuff like that. It's been leaked. It's been leaked. So if you are part of the fantasy football, uh, I think it's the Sun or the no the Premier League one. Um, uh, the um, that newspaper in front of me. Yeah, I know. No one likes the sun. Well, lots of people do, but we don't. Um, the uh, next play. The, so you choose a, you choose a player, uh-huh. and their opposition is. We're playing Southampton at home. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Is that our first game? Apparently. Man, you Arsenal. Interesting. First game of the season for them. Used okay. to be interesting. Yeah, yeah. This is going like a mid-table battle now, yeah. isn't it? I mean, to me, we can't really say I mean, about they, Man United. They finished above us. Yeah, this season, last season, the season before. I know. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. But with that, obviously, this is the season review. Yes. Just as we go into it. Going to go, we've got a running order here because, you know, we're organised here, kind of. Uh, we've got the movie... <laughs> movie... <laughs> No. Matt Rushmore, follow us. <laughs> <laughs> We've got season review, the best bits going to go through. Did Lampard get the credit he deserved? Player of the season, young player of the season, surprise package, and then your questions, which you sent to me on Twitter. So uh, let's get straight into it. Best bits of the season. Do you want to start, Mitch? Um, I think it was going really well up until Christmas, or so just before New Year's. I thought we were doing quite well there. Um, we had a, some some... Great games in the Champions League. We looked like an exciting, youthful side. It did kind of all go a bit wrong around January. Mm. Um, so, but like for the first, you know, three, three, four months of this season, um, that was mo- the most exciting bit. Apart from getting drubbed four 0 on the opening day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, we kind of like. But that kind of, that. I, you know what? That kind of lowered everyone's expectations. Mm-hmm. we were kind of okay cool this is very much a work in progress and I think from that point onwards we, we, it's got better yeah I mean I, I, you, you. well I mean I didn't go in with any expectations if I'm honest at all this what season. the start of the season no no I think we, we I, well I mean the, we had a decent pre-season when you never really can tell with, with what's going on Pedro's goal here. against Salzburg by yeah. the way which no one talks about well, <laughs> I mean yeah. I, I, I I think um, I, we're all pr- we're all presumably really happy with how the season's gone. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Massively overachieved given the uh, hurdles that were put up in front of us. Uh, if, if you'd said to me at the beginning of the season, with the transfer ban, having just lost the best player in the Premier League, fact, not opinion, hey, would you be happy with third, fourth place and the FA Cup final? Definitely. Yeah. And round of sixteen, the Champions League. I think people forget. Yeah, that I think well. that's that's a really important. Going thing. out, money wise, it's it's really 
set us up for for a decent transfer window. Mm. I mean, with that as well, which has started I, already. Mm. I mean, I I didn't think we'd get out of our group, if I'm honest. It, really? No, I think we had we had Valencia, uh, Ajax. Ajax, and Lille. Lille just come off an amazing season and were actually performing really well. But obviously, they were the minnows. But then you had Ajax, semi finalists of the Champions League the year mm-hmm. before. Fantastic side. Then obviously Valencia are a very, very good team yeah. and a solid very side. Very well. depleted Ajax team, though. Still brilliant. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, still like, brilliant, but you all, know, they weren't picked to bones just yet. De Jong gone, De Ligt gone. They definitely were. Well, they, they, if they weren't picked to bones, they're, they're about gonna be, to be. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we might take another two of their players. Oh, yeah. nah, nah. I mean, we, 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 we will. We will. <laughs> His name's Andre. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, we will go. To that in a minute, obviously we are we, we're going off at tangents. We, we're good at this. We did this last week. Tangents yeah. are good. Tangents are good, but we kind of we want to stay on track because we've got the season review to go through. So yeah. obviously, you know, we've 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 done that up until Christmas. Good Champions League. I think I'm just going to put it forward straight off the bat. Best game this season, and probably the best game at Stamford Bridge in a long time. Ajax for a neutral as well. That probably for me, like in terms of my favourite games I've been to: six 0 versus Arsenal, three 0 versus United. Uh, the 2-2 against Spurs Battle of the Bridge where we won less of the league oh you were at that lucky I was boy at that. I was a lucky little boy you see for me personally I live with United fan and going into the semi-finals of the FA Cup he was giving it quite a lot obviously being mm. done three times by them this season so when we fucked them up I was <laughs> <laughs> I was just overcome with joy and I've never seen a man sulk so much in his life. And I've, I had money on it as well and I won. So that's kind of why. And it's kind of yeah. recent. It's more more front of mind than... Um, United have been How a long ago weird was bogey Ajax? team. Huh? Ajax. How long ago was I? November? I think it was October. October. It's coming November? up to a, like 10 months. I, I feel like I've aged 25 years during this lockdown. Yeah. I don't know. I feel old. I found grey hairs... I've got a grey hair in my beard. So oh, I had one in my neck the other day. I had yeah. to go. But can we stop talking about yes. hairs and move back to football? Football! <laughs> football! Um, a lot of editing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was... No, that's game of the season for sure. Season, if we're talking about November. the best games I've ever experienced at the bridge, Chelsea 4, Barcelona 2. Oh, that was a great game. That's the best game I've ever been to. By on, quite a long so way. I'm racking my brain. Come back to me on this one. Saw that <laughs> my, my old wonder man. goal from yeah. Ronaldinho. Great goal. To be fair, my, my old man, because I was speaking to him about this yesterday, and he came up with the 4-2 against Liverpool in the FA Cup mm. when we were 2-0 down. And uh, Sparky went and scored a couple of goals. Nothing like a Fiale combat. as well. That was a good one. Um, Your boy. He was indeed. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'd say that's game of the season. I mean, other contenders, obviously, Manchester United in the FA Cup semi-final. Yeah. Liverpool. Liverpool? Well, well, well Billy, Billy Gilmore. Oh, well, not, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I don't know if it was. Uh, oh, that was what a little down, revelation yeah. he is, huh? Fantastic player. Shame about the injury. Yeah. But, could say I mean, that about I a think, lot of our players. Yeah, we who's have, in we charge have... of, who's the physio at Chelsea? They need a, we need that, a kick. We need that, like, lady doctor back. <laughs> Ava Canera. The one, the one that Reno shouted out. She, like, she was good. She, oh, she was. It's, it's the fact that, as well, like... She was good at her job, and she's the only physio in world football that every single person knew. <laughs> like, who's Chelsea physio? Eva Canero. Oh, yeah. why do you know that? It's like, you know, good at her job. She's good at her job, exactly. Back. Yeah, there is. The- <laughs> 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 I mean, we'll tell you about. It. I think I think there is the. You're a physio, aren't you? Yeah. So was she good? I liked her. <laughs> <laughs> Expert yeah. opinion. She was good. I'm, I'm surrounded by children. It's unbelievable. This I'm is rich good. coming from you. <laughs> 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 you were trying to deep throat the mic before. I wasn't, I wasn't oh, trying dear. to. Let's football move. back to football. Back, no, back to football. football. We're very good. But, but I mean, yeah. So you've got obviously Chelsea, Ajax, Man United, Liverpool game. I tell you, put that forward as a three and then people can vote in the poll what they think their favourite game was. Yeah, or let us know in the comments below. Exactly, and that. Prediction that that's going to win. Yeah. Prediction. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chelsea Ajax. <laughs> that's the one in front of us right now. It's just amazing. And then, obviously, on that as well, we've got two Chelsea players that scored for Ajax. Uh, you've got, well, it's technically it's one, but it comes under one goal. Uh, Kepa Arizabalaga, mm. or Keith, as I like to call him. Keith. Yeah. All right. You've got Dave right back, Keith in goal, you've got Kurt, and then you can have like Andy next to him and Andreas Christensen. 
What's going to be your name for Kayo Tomori? Fig. Tommy. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> and then left back, I mean... What We're we going into snatch territory yet, yeah. Keith and Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Dave. What, Dave. What, what year was uh, Snatch released, Nico? <laughs> <laughs> snatch, I think, is post-2000, is isn't it? I think it's 2000. No, no, yeah, 2000. Oh, we're, we're all wrong. 99. 2000. We're wow. all wrong. Wow. Back well, to football. Exactly. Back to <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. So, obviously, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Who your favourite player, what your favourite game was. Obviously, in that game, Hakim Ziyech took the free kick. Kepa. No, 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 no. Let's just talk about that. Don't just brush over that. Because I said this in the piece that I did for um, the Chelsea Echo. when I that, that piece that I wrote. When we were talking about Ziyech, it wasn't how good the free kick was. It was the swagger yeah. with the look that he gave to the Matthew Harding after. That was it. Was like, he was looking like right? At raise rock. it, it nice. l- l- dude. Locked eyes with all of us and went, "What?" That's. <laughs> I was like, yeah. the whole of the Matthew Harding erupted in anger. I was there, silent, going, "My guy." We, we, My we, guy, you were, you were sat behind me, weren't you? you were yeah. up, and we just looked at each other like, "Yeah, I like yeah. that." <laughs> so it's, have it's that, mad. have that. Not He's, just for the quality of the nah. free kick, the 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 debonair the swagger the, the yeah. I don't give two fucks he's quality hostile environment what do you, do you think do you think he'll do it at Chelsea yes yeah I because kind of, of that swagger I kind of also think uh, he's going to be the dark horse a bit because Werner and possibly um, Havertz are going to come in and be kind of the more marquee signings just because of the price tag yeah yeah um, and I just think I don't know. There's an I don't know. I just I just think he he's going under the radar a bit, and will have a bit more of an impact than we're expecting. Mm. I think he'll take time to settle. I mean, I, I just look at his frame, and then look at the Premier League when he comes up against Eiffel World playing Southampton. A Vestergaard, he's going to get absolutely torn apart. Unless you Vestergaard say that, mate, him. I don't know. He's got that. I've been watching the training videos that Chelsea have put out. I've been watching how comfortable he is. He's one of those players who he's just got it. Yeah, that's fair. You've either got it or you don't, and I don't mean in terms of physical stature. Just confidence I just confidence and like the mental sort there, of. There, yeah. it's in his head. He really rates himself. It's just the way, that's the impression I get from him from the way he plays. And that's the sort of player we need. I, I really I am excited. I mean, players that just like, they just feel themselves and think they're good. I mean, a Delta Rapt being yeah, a prime example. Yeah, but he is good. As, <laughs> mate, he's Proven. Look, all the players who are good have that. Yeah. You Ronaldo. I mean? None of them, none of them, they're all, they're, you want that sort of, sort of selfishness in a, in a full Yes. You want that There's support. very few players who are like Lionel Messi who are very good but also very selfless, right? Mm. But Ronaldo rates himself that higher competitive... than anyone. And he's the GOAT. Discuss. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I think as an athlete, he's the best ever. As, as a, a player, most improved player also. Yeah. As, as an all-out Not player, most naturally gifted, but the one who's worked yeah. hardest to get to where he I'm, is. Uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, well, I'm a Messi fan, but I, I, I agree with, all, what, with everything you're saying. Oh, but dude, you can't be a football fan and not be a Messi yeah. fan. Guys, can we just appreciate that they're both here at the same can't time? Can we appreciate can we... that Messi might be coming yeah. out of Barcelona? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you know something I don't? No, no, I was going to say coming, but he's not coming to us. He'll probably go to City or something. I, if I, I he'll be at City he'll, for two more seasons go, until about 35. Mm. He'll get a two-year contract, 33 oh, to give, 35. Won't take, Messi won't take a two-year contract anyway. Right? I don't think Messi's got much choice in the matter. Are you? Do you know who Messi is? I know that Messi's 33. Yeah. yeah, but it's kind of like... I mean, Messi, I believe this is. Willian got is, a three-year contract. <laughs> <laughs> Need I say more? Yeah. Let me say this, right? Ronaldo is a physical specimen. He's yeah. just genetically superior in every single sense, right? He's the sort of player who maybe a bit like Giggs, maybe oh, is that old brilliant England winger way before our time? Before Stanley and, Matthews. 
Uh, Stanley knew, Matthews. Yeah. Thank you, Louis. Um, I played till like he was 50. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You've got players in life who are just specimens. Ronaldo, this might sound crazy. I could see him doing another two World Cups, but, maybe. But He's that. He, his body is that much of a freaking that's temple. fine, but also... If Messi you look, isn't going to last much longer. Messi is also a type of player who could probably drop down and become a Zabi sort of player. Do you know what I mean? Who could... Yeah. Who, who yeah. could... I'd never thought of that. Who's never fair. really... Who's never really relied on just his, you know, pace and power or anything like that. But he's just such a genius. He could just come down and be... He could in be the Pirlo. In the Premier League. <laughs> well, I'm, I, well, I'm just this is what we're talking yeah, about I as theoretics. In the, in the Prem, I give him two years. At that level. I mean, looking David at Silver. His, yeah. I mean, looking at yeah. His numbers, How old is he? Yeah, but it's a different level from, from uh, Messi, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, they're two very different players. I mean, yeah. Me Messi here on transfer mark, right winger, centre forward, stri second striker. So you could yes. see him potentially playing as a 10. But that would mean City would have to completely change their system. And but De Bruyne is not dropping. No. Exactly. No. Unless they move De Bruyne into... Which like, is not happening. Because De Bruyne, I believe, is the heir apparent of Eden Hazard of being the best player in the Premier League at the moment. Yeah, oh, he's, no he's been the best player this season. Well, there is a doubt. You've got Mane after the seasons he's had. <sighs> Salah, there's an argument for him. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we're, again, we're... Uh... Ability-wise, you have to talk about Paul Pogba. You have to. Oh, can I be honest? The I... Paul Pogba who plays for United is not Paul Pogba. That's just... The, the, when he puts on the blue shirt of France, it's a different player. Yeah, this, this is the exact problem. Like He's a different player when he plays for France, but when he plays in the Premier League, we're talking about the best player in the Premier League. Oh, no, but I'm saying... on. I, I, I did preface it by saying, based on ability, you have to talk about Pogba yeah, as being so naturally gifted. I guess that's he true. doesn't turn it on. God knows why. Maybe he thinks he's above United. Who knows? I'm not going to second guess him. Mm. But the the Pogba for France is one of the most gifted players in the world. I think also you, when, when you're playing in that France team and there's quality everywhere. 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 So it's kind of like in, in, at United, it's, I mean, they're a good side. But they've lacked confidence and they're, they're lacking. I mean, till, they, they were completely different side before Bruno came. So oh, he's brilliant, isn't he? They just, it's just, I've never seen a transfer sort of change <sighs> the fortunes and the confidence of a team. Ingolo Kante to Chelsea. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a good player, is, is Bruno. But, but I mean, it's hot midway he's... through a season. Yeah, as yeah. Well. yeah. No, he's, he's, he's brilliant, he's man. He's brilliant, but I, I, I don't like all this hype around him. Like, yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. But like, I also can't deny the, the, the change in form. Yeah. Um, that's true. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll move on. Obviously, leave your thoughts. Messi, Ronaldo, Xavi, Iniesta, Gary Lineker, Stanley Matthews, if you know who he is. Let me know your thoughts <laughs> down in the comments section below. Let us know. Uh, next topic we're talking about, obviously, is Lampard and the credit. Did he get what he deserved? Um, I think he has from, from, from the Chelsea sort of contingent. I think we're all pretty... Uh, well, I think everyone's singing. Well, you know, apart from the idiots on Twitter. Um, we love Twitter. I think also from the pundits. I don't know so much how the press have treated him. It's been very hit and miss. You know, some days they're out for his blood. Some days, mm. he's, as to quote you, he's the best thing since sliced bread. But week in, week out, irrespective of which channel you're watching, be it BBC Sports or Sky Football, whatever, even BT Sport, the pundits are always incredibly acknowledging of how well he's done and they always leave him glowing reviews even Roy Keane who's the hardest man to please on the pundit team says yeah. Frank's done a fantastic job you know he's, he's I mean, oh, do you he think that's does because get he credit. was a pundit previously Frank he's got a bit more like um, no, credit with them no I don't think there's I, anything I to do with it I think he, <laughs> yeah, they don't give Gary Neville <laughs> he's slacked either. right um, no I think he's a young manager who if if we're looking at the card, uh, if we're looking at the card Chelsea dealt themselves, really, yeah, he's an icon on the pitch, but they weren't exactly in investing or putting their trust in a sure product. I, you said this last so week, not, yeah, like they, they, Derby finished in exactly the same position with him and without him. But he got, he did get into a playoff final again. I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate because I think we, are we no, agree you know what? Him? I think I think um, at the start of the season. No one had Chelsea in the top four, apart from Rude Hullet, of all the pundits. 
Um, Go on, so, uh, and you know, at the end, I think that like once they've seen his performance and how he's done, I, I think, um, I think they do. Are, they are giving him the, the respect he deserves. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah, I, th- I think. I mean, he's not been perfect. No, hundred percent. No, I think, I our defense is an issue. <laughs> and you and to to go off of what you were saying at the top of the show, you know, the four 0 jobbing from United, those errors are still there a whole yeah. season on. That's my one cause of concern, and it's surprising because Frank has worked under some defensive masterminds yeah. like Joe say. I know Carlo Ancelotti is definitely more attack than defense minded, yeah. but he's got very very good defensive pedigree does mm. Carlo Ancelotti I'm really surprised that for all of the from all the managers that Frank's worked under some of who as I've said are very very astute defensively he's not applying that maybe but he's I very think, much think, trying well, to do I his own also, thing but you look at you look at the managers who he's worked under and I don't think their philosophy is um applicable to today's game you, you know you know you look at Jose and he seems like a bit of a dinosaur sometimes and he's um he's mm. you know it, that, let's that, go with something a bit more concise then what about Steve Holland who is noted for being brilliant on set pieces both attacking and defensive Frank played you know under mm. him and we've been appalling with we have been awful I w- especially I at corners, corners and that surprises with, with me statistically we i think we can see the most guys from corners we in did. the league we did so say, saying that i think definitely look, as, as much as frank lampard deserves to be lauded for what he's done yes i think that there is a lot to work on we spoke about defense you look at what that look at that liverpool team basically let's talk pre van dyke and I, this, I, this is people are going to be like oh everyone always says this I see similarity. I, I, I do. I know exactly what you're saying. We touched on it when we did the dry run before, um, but I don't think it's just Van Dyke with with Liverpool. It's, it's also the, it's coaches. No, no, Alisson. it's also Allison. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's also You've like, got a keeper between the sticks who inspires confidence. Kappa does not fill me with confidence. Or the people, the three or four in front of them. I I think the I three. Agree. Four, what we what we need for me. And I'm going to put it again out there. Again, we said it in the dry run, but we've got to have a different same reaction. Okay, so nobody knows. <laughs> <gasps> really? It's a great idea. Um, <laughs> I think Thiago Silva, potentially for a year, I know he goes against everything in Chelsea's policy currently, wages, age, everything. I, but I feel because there is such a lack of pedigree on the market right now that Thiago Silva could potentially be the man for one year just to shore up that defence. He's played 22 games already this season, been a mainstay in that PSG team. Mm-hmm. You have a Fakaya Tamori who's probably going to go out on loan. Kurt Zuma, best defender for us this year, S- still has a mistake in What? Him. I think he's been our best, most consistent centre. I'd say he's been our worst. I disagree. I'd say I'd say he's... he's been... Zuma since day one has been abysmal. I mean, his no reactions one, no are one's slow. Been, his positioning's no terrible. Been, I think there's some great last-minute tackles that he's made. Oh, mate, take he's, a horse to water and all that. Eventually, they'll drink. But <laughs> well, I, I know, think I he's think, been I an think, absolute donkey. That, that's. I mean, you know, we all, we all watch and interpret the game in a different way. You know, things that happen on the pitch resonate with all of us differently. There are there is a world that exists beyond pure mm. stats. I appreciate that, but. I'm not saying who's right and who's wrong here, but every time I've watched Zuma play, and I've messaged you repeatedly throughout the season, every time he's he's fucked up, I I'm like, be Zuma sat, again. Sat behind me at Chelsea, just hearing fucking going for Zuma. Like, <laughs> for <laughs> fuck's sake, it's like, oh. right, Nico, come Yeah. I mean, look, look, if you look at, okay, look at the other options we had. Fakara Tamori and Zuma. Great Tamori. Consistent. Tamori's been great, but obviously physically, clearly he's not fitting in like Frank's plans at the minute. Well, I, d- I just, I don't know. Like at the start of the season, he was, there was, I mean, there was a bit of a partnership developing there, but then, mm. the, but it's just, that's the story of the whole season. There's just been no consistency and no confidence in that defence. Rudiger is doing everything he can to be nominated the most disappointing player of the season. And yeah, because Liverpool, whereby I thought we had a unit. He's it's the injury. As soon as he's had that injury, it's done. not just that. Look at how he is on the ball. He looks really. Maybe it's just his technique and the, how he generally plays the game. But when I see him controlling the ball, trapping the ball, passing the ball, he looks really uncomfortable and slow. That's mm. not injury. That's just ability slash technique. This again, it's just an impression I've got. Rudiger doesn't look up to the pace of the Premier League. 
let Liverpool want to buy him. Take him. Give us Van Dijk. <laughs> I, th- I think it's this thing. I think, personally, I think Zuma's been our best out of what people can say is a bad bunch. I feel he's not he's not been outstanding, but he's been, again, the most consistent. A decent, a decent Premier level. League centre-half. Exactly. But we, we do we do need to sign a centre-back. Let's talk this morning. Obviously, I saw on the Athletic, Upa Meccano being linked to... to Dayo Upa Meccano. Now, that's a player I would like. But again, this my my issue with this is twenty four. We 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 and we what? A, what we don't need more ages, young centre backs. Nah, Louis, age is just a number in football. If you're good enough, you're good enough. I said this to you in the dry run. Rooney was tearing Arsenal up at fifteen. Owen was scoring against Argentina at eighteen. Pele and Kylian Mbappe are scoring in World Cup finals. Age doesn't mean shit. If you are good enough, yeah, you are good I, enough. I agree with that, but I think there's this con- also um, I, 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 in a position like centre half, mm. where physicality is a major issue. Stick ten kilos of muscle on him, sure. Yeah, but that, sometimes if you, like if you're eight, I'm not saying at 24. 24, I agree, you're probably old enough. 24, you can bulk and at go 18, down. 19, yeah. you're not going to be. Um, no, you're not going to be it. No, as sure, twenty five year old. You're, well, that's thing, sure, yeah. that's just normal. That's I mean, you, and you get your, you know, your most, uh, your bones uh, get more dense, your muscles develop more as you get older. That all goes without saying. Do but they? Not for you. <laughs> <laughs> twenty four for a defender. You are coming on. You are you are coming into the first, maybe the first year of your best years. Like hit the gym, do some, you know, bulk up a bit. But Upa Meccano is a is a talent. I'm not familiar with him. Oh, he's he, he's, where's, where's he's French boy. Uh, he's class. Transfer marked. Yeah. So Upa Meccano. If we have a little butchers of him. I like the name Upa Meccano. Upa. <laughs> I, I just can't wait for the English to call him Diet. <laughs> uh, I just I just I just the every yacht. time the was yacht. it I see um when when English pundits and English ref um, not referees commentators say Italian names as my head Mate, same as French. Gigliardino. No, that's not his name. It's like... Giroud. That's the one that does my head in. Giroud. I appreciate you might not be able to pronounce the R I'm properly. I'm pronounce everything wrong. Just to D. Giroud. <laughs> Permission to hit him, Nico. He annoys me too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Upa Meccano. Mm-hmm. Dayot. Dave. Here we go. Big Mike. Hey-o. 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 <laughs> Unfortunately, Chelsea. Of the worst one thing with Chelsea that annoys me, Chelsea fans, we don't really have the most imaginative songs. No. Like I look at Man United and I look at Liverpool. Oh, that was really cool. I even I think that, and then I look at Chelsea. Like if when we had Costa, I like the Fabregas Diego, song. Fabregas is magic. That was good. The Willie yeah. song was good. Yeah, we don't talk about him though. Um, right. Okay. So the Bakayoko song was cursed but good. <laughs> I was Became real... accurate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so statistics for 1920. That can't be right. So he's played 83 games in the 1920 season. Who, so who, where, where is Dale from? Uh, Dale? Yeah. Dale, what, what club is he at? I so mean... he's, he is currently at RB Leipzig. So okay. we, we won't sign uh, him this year because we just signed Timo Burton from them. I can't yeah. see him going in for a double bang. Um um, no? Are we getting what's the name back off? Remember, um, this is a club that was only established a few yeah. years ago, no. huh? Yes, that's true. But, I mean, they are backed by Red Bull, so I don't think money's an issue for them. Most hated side in uh, in, in German football, aren't they? Yeah, it's a really yeah, interesting yeah. story, to be fair. I, um, I've got a, a friend, 50 plus one podcast on IT Sports, if you guys want to go and check that out. He's based in Germany, that much, so yeah. I can't go over it. Uh, but, um, but yeah, he did a really interesting story on Leipzig and just kind of explained how they were formed and what the situation was. And it's basically a case of they're hated because obviously with the 50 plus one rule, 51% of the club is owned by the fans. Mm-hmm. But Red Bull found a loophole and basically sold the shares of the club to Red Bull employees. Yeah. So basically <laughs> it's like, you're still owned by the fans technically, yeah. but it's more of a business structure. Key word, that. technically. Um, yeah. But I mean, okay. But in terms of hit the actual player this year, um, 28 appearances, six yellow cards, uh, played seventy seven percent of the minutes in the league that year, uh, and seventy nine percent of the, was in the starting eleven. So How old is he? Twenty four, uh, you say? Twenty four. Um, no, he's not. Hang on. Oh my god, he's twenty one. 
He's born just under a year after me. That is so depressing. Take him. Take him. He seems like a Lampard player. Absolutely take him. But are we going to sign him? Or is it just it's, it's paper talk at the minute. <sighs> mm. I mean, for me, I'd like to see Declan Rice sign for Chelsea in that set in the back row. Right. Role. I'd like to see White join Chelsea. Well, should we talk about I that? I thought you were just saying about Declan Rice. White Rice. White. Is that okay? Jesus Christ. I don't like him. He's white. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, cool. Relief. Mooch is back in the room. Yeah, okay. I thought we were going to have another tube incident. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did you see that? That, that was did, mental. Oh, mate, that guy deserved it. Of course. He did. The one thing, this is just, is it time th- this is the, just the martial artist in me talking. <laughs> I don't think you should hit a guy when he's knocked out. I mean, Not that he didn't deserve it. No, the, no, the him and then, yeah, you can see like his they, glasses they, were they off. Stomped then. the fuck on his arm. They tried to break his arm when he was down. That was the one thing I was like, he deserved it. Even if you broken his arm, he still deserves it. Yeah, he deserves to but be. When a guy's knocked out, yeah, yeah. When he's knocked out, you've won. Oh yeah, when someone's knocked out, or if you punch him in the back of the head, that's what I don't like. You've yes, got, you've got a few stories about that, haven't you? Yeah. Well, different podcast. Uh, <laughs> but that's I would... the film podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the movie Mount Rushmore. Make sure you check that out. Um, Thank you, Louis. But yeah. Movie full Mount Rushmore. Movie, movie, Mount, Ru- movie Mount Rushmore? Movie Mount Rushmore. There you go. Movie. Haven't you got a radio show as well now? We do. K2K Radio once a month. He's got his marketing. Do you want to, anything you want to market quickly? Not yet. <laughs> Basically, I mean, Mooch's got somebody who can market. Nico can market stuff. I'm also here. Hi. Uh, you got but, the Chelsea, um, the Imperial Wolf. Imperial Wolf, the, the boys, boy. I mean, the boys, come check out, check, check us out. Imperial Wolf. We've got a game tomorrow if you want to come watch. <laughs> Technically, you're not do you allowed. Have my, <laughs> do, you, do you have my kit bag? I ordered it. It hasn't arrived yet. Oh, good. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but yeah, I right. do. We got. I've right. Can Ethan I talk about Ethan Amperdy? Is an interesting one. I've got me. Me and Chris came up with an amazing song for Ethan Amperdy to not on Red Balloons, and I'm so annoyed that it's not caught on yet. Maybe it's because it's not amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Night on Red Balloons. It is great. It's a great tune. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I don't know the <laughs> German though. No, it's, 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 it's the chorus. <laughs> we got Ethan Amperdy plays the middle for the blues. On the left and on the right, stopping goals all fucking night. La, 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 la. No, fair enough. It's, I think it's, it's all right. Nice. I'm quite happy with it. Further yeah, yeah. fuel to the fire that we come up with shit songs. No, That's not a bad I thought, one. I thought but that was decent, man. The, um, Thanks, I was expecting <laughs> a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> I just get bullied. It's not fair. The, um, um, the worst one I have to say is poor old Hudson Odoi. He's got the worst song at Chelsea. What, the one to Bob Marley? Oi, 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 a doy. Boring. Pe- yeah, no, but people miss out the main bit. There's like an actual... Like, that's all the people sing. Up. Yeah, it's because when people... Yeah, I don't know, whatever. But I mean, it's one of those... I, I like the one that um, Salt and Pepper, they did for Loftus Cheek. Yeah, that was good. That was good. That was good. Lewis and Balak. What a, what a name that is. Um... I mean, yeah, um, obviously we're, we're talking about Ethan Ampadu. Yeah, I ben put this White, to you last week. Put Dave at centre back. As a three, 100%. Bit like Real did with Sergio, Sergio Ramos. Because remember, he started as a right back and then yeah. moved centre and became but I, but I, yeah, a Yeah, there's a beast. difference in, in the stature. And I don't think Dave is, is, is a centre back in a, in a two. Part of a three. Yeah. Part but of a even three. there, I mean, like, it just, I just remember when he was playing as a three and. Deli Ali against Tottenham. Do you remember? Just, just yeah. The, it was yeah. where teams focused I, um, their attack. Huh? I think our right back should be Rhys James. Massive, massive fan of I his. I think we're all agreed on that. I think. I think he's got a lot to learn. I still think his positioning is absolutely diabolical. Sometimes against Leicester, he was Abject. out of sorts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think that was not just that was the, the whole team just got off the bus wrong that day and it needed mm-hmm. a triple substitution to yeah. fix. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting. I think the, the beauty of what we have at the minute is we're talking about Aspilicueta maybe going in the centre-back. You've got a player in Ethan Ampadu and the talk of Declan Rice who can both play in that position and can both play as defence midfielders as well. I think I'd like to see Declan Rice 
as a centre back at Chelsea. You know, we're talking about age is just a number. Mm. He's one of the only players right now where I think about it and go, Do you know what? You can see that. You can see the technique. When he obviously he's playing defence midfield, but as a leader, you can see that he's like that at West Ham. But I think that's maybe because he came through, you know, Chelsea's academy rather than West Ham's academy. I don't know why he did when he was like 15 onwards. Mm. But, you know, he, he had that level of learning from the off. And he had the role model in John Terry who has been tapping him up as well. I don't know if anyone's seen that on Instagram. <laughs> That's uh, been interesting. But I think you look at him and you look at Ethan Ampadu as a player was told, what well, you are going out on loan. And he's just turned around to Chelsea and gone, yep. I'm not going out on loan. I want to fight for my place. And he's done it at the right time as well, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Billy 100%. Gilmore out injured, Jorginho looking out of sorts, Kante looking out of sorts. You've got a player there who can hold down that anchor role really well. I mean, for Wales, he's kind of always delivered. Mm. And I remember in one game, he, he, he like... <laughs> Was he 17 or something? And he, yeah. he's he's been kicked about and is giving it just as much yeah. as he's getting it. He made, he made Sergio Ramos his bitch. I remember yeah. that. that was <laughs> Only brilliant. thing I would say about Ampadu, get some muscle on him. He's yeah, this a is bit the on the slight this, this side. Is, also, I mean, he did. He hasn't really done bits at, on, on loan, has he? No, he wasn't really given an opportunity. I think he only got three appearances. Um, Whereas, again, you've got a question. There's a reason for that. I mean, if you if you look at that Leipzig team, I think that might be a big reason for it as well. I mean, he he was look, he's nineteen. He can play as a centre back. Uh, he made yeah three appearances. Uh, oh, is that just Champions League? No, it's okay. This no, it's, so three appearances in the Champions League, three appearances in the Bundesliga, an appearance in the DFB Pokal. So he's made s- seven appearances. My maths is awful at the minute. Seven appearances this year. So he's he's all right. Um, but, but I mean, look, it's, 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 it's how his preseason comes and how he takes yep. his opportunity. Mm. So he's how about the left side? Stay this what of of centre back or left side, left left back, left back? Okay, because we've got a chat, but yeah. we had this chat again on our dry run between I, Chilwell and Tagliafico. I think Chilwell is is pretty much happening now, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he apparently cleared out his cupboard at Leicester, so that's all pretty much done. But we did actually get a very interesting I question love to about see that. that like, like someone else isn't clearing out his cupboard for him. Like. <laughs> just a kit man. Get yeah. your shit and yeah. fuck off. Like, that's what he's saying. Like, with that. a like, brown box as if he's been fired from an office. <laughs> got the plant just yeah. carried in there as well. Um, okay, so uh, we actually got this question through uh, from someone on the Chelsea Echo. We've got a lot of questions to get through today, actually. And uh, people are talking about left back. Uh, and it was the lone front man. He had, who's your ideal left back signing? Chilwell, Reggion, we'll just call him Reggie because I can't say his name, uh, Taliafico or Tellez. What uh, about Megales? Who? Megales, maybe I'm pronouncing I, it. I don't, <laughs> know. Tellez. I, don't, <laughs> I don't know who you're talking I don't about. Know who this, is, this is news to me. Move on. If it's not in the question, it's not in the I question. I mean, out of those four, personally, I'm a big, after watching him for Sevilla in the Europa League, I'm a big Reg, Reggion Reggie fan. Yeah. Um, Let's get Reggie at left back. It's brilliant. Reggie. I, I'm, uh, I, uh, we, we touched Tommy. on this on our dry run before, but uh, if Ashley Cole wants fucking Ben Chilwell, we get Ben Chilwell. Yeah. In my eyes. It's yeah. kind of like, yeah. listen, if he sees something there, cool. He's Premier League proven. Yep. Even though he didn't have the best season this season, but he's, he's young. He can deliver a ball. He's, uh, I saw, I saw quite, sort of quite interesting sort of side by side with. Um, Regulion and, and Chilwell um, and Regulion is slightly better um, uh, defensively but they're basically so similar it's mm. Yeah, I You're think more on the Tagliafico side, aren't you? Well, I was until I saw news this morning. So Leicester are actually lining up Tagliafico as a replacement for Chilwell. But they're it being quoted at 40 million. We're being quoted at 60, 50, 60 million for Chilwell. I'd rather this spend is the something extra 10 that million. I was always like, Onana at 30 million and Tagrafika at 25. Who's saying this? Because I'm pretty sure Ajax would be like, we're probably going to want a bit more than that. Yeah. I mean, literally, I think I literally just go. Unless there's a buyout clause. I think I'm with Onana, sh- there's a buyout clause. Bad contract if that's the only amount they put in for buyout clause, eh? I think, yeah, market, well, his market value is 30 million, which is probably why people are going pretty much doing what we're doing and going, let's go on transfer marks. But I yeah. think you, what, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. You look at that 32 million, that is going to be his standardized fee. You've then got to consider he's an international. Mm. He is their first choice goalkeeper. 
It's Chelsea coming to call in. Yeah. He's from the Barcelona Academy. Mm. It's that's just gonna whack on all of that, probably an extra thirty million. So yeah. you're looking at you're probably looking at about sixty million, I'd say, for him, realistically. Pope, there's no talk about Pope, Pope, I want it. Yeah. I've 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 said this to you since over a year now, when we were last having our uh, our, our Focaccias in Bottega di Anna. Shout out Bottega to them because yeah, that is one of the best Italians I've had in London. I, I agree with that. Where is it? Spoke the Italian. It's, uh, it's Wilsden. Oh that. my god, it's it's up there. Genuinely, like it's it's actually tastes like it right. as well. It's there in Bar Italia again. Tangent. Go talk to me. About tangent. Italy. Go. Yeah, Nick Pope. I mean, it would either be him or Dean Henderson if we were going for one closer to home. But I, I think United would be crazy. To not drop De Gea and put Dean Henderson as the number one now, 100%. Um, that's their business, though. If, he, if is, has Henderson got like a year or two left on his contract? Should we go? Look I think at he's only got a that? couple of years left on his contract, uh, so that's the issue. And he's not going to sign a new contract unless he's given assurances of becoming a first team. Well, player. one thing's for sure is Nick Pope has made a very strong case for himself for being England's number one after the last 100%, few seasons. He's 100%. a much, much, much better shot stopper, f- statistically proven, mm. than Jordan Pickford. I mean, look, looking at this, oh my god, he's only a few months older than me. That is so depressing. Um, yeah. be my age, <laughs> I, because I, I always thought when whenever what, I hear you're that you're going to make it in the prem, <laughs> I would eating competitions, Premier yeah. eating competitions, I could do that. I think looking at this, um, I mean, put it this way, he's definitely not going back to Sheffield United. They've just signed Aaron Ramsdale for eighteen point five million from Bournemouth, right. so that's a done deal. Um, he currently has two years left on his contract. Um, I, I mean, it, it, they either are going to cash in on him next year. Mm. They can't cash in on him with one year left on his contract. No, they need to do it no, now. They will need to do it. I they think... will offer him a new contract. They have to. That he's coming back to United because De Gea's confidence is fucked. Yeah. He's and uh, He's going to want assurances though. Yeah, huh? but assurances sign the contract and then we'll deal with it later. <laughs> if... It's and to be honest, happen, yeah. it, like sign the contract, we'll give you, we'll, we'll, you, we'll be fighting for first team. We're mm. going to judge it on preseason. And if the hair is dog shit, he will be first team choice. Can I be real? If I'm Henderson after the season I've just had, and I'm thinking I'm probably maybe arrogantly better than Jordan Pickford now, and I'm fighting for Nick Pope to, you know, be an international level player. And I genuinely believe I've had a better season than the former greatest goalkeeper in the world and United's number one. As obviously the money is a major factor, but there are a lot of players who do want to have, you know, stake their claim. Not everyone's Harry Kane and shows off on Instagram with look at all my golden balls. It's like, yeah, where's your medals at? (laughs) You know, there are players who actually want to win shit. And I think he's one of those. And I think he's going to want a lot more assurances than here's a big contract which is just there to keep mm. other interested parties away, but then he's going to want to play. If he's got that mentality, he's going to back himself to be a better b- uh, goalkeeper than De Gea, who's been on a shit run of form. Yeah. But I think it was because De Gea is also the highest played player at the club. I think he's on £300,000 a week. He's on more than Pogba? He's yeah. on more than Pogba. Fucking hell. So David De Gea, he, he obviously got that contract when he was unreal. And then the back end of 18, 19 and then 19, 20, he has been diabolical to say the least. The fact that, that as much as I've been a Kepista, I've been a big Kepa fanboy for ages, there's no doubt that this season Kepa has been poor, probably one of the worst keepers in the league. Yep. Um, he is Spain's number one. Oliver yeah. David De Gea. That's the, yeah, that that's says all you need to know. The fact that so it's one of those where I mean we I'm um, literally we have been rumored to go in for Dean Henderson. Apparently we tabled an offer, but you know I don't. According know to who? Uh, who is it saying? Just offer? trust me. <laughs> no, just tr- <laughs> uh, dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, bro. Well, no, this is, I'm just reading it off of here that we we apparently went for a room. We went in for it. Except I'd for be all for Dean same. Henderson. All for it. Or, and think, Nick Pope. I'm with you, Mooch. I think Nick yeah. Pope would be an amazing acquisition. I think Nick Nick Pope as a player, I think the reason Lampard might not sign Nick Pope is, even though he's very clearly stated, you know, the priority for a goalkeeper is to stop the ball going in the net. Yep. And Nick Pope's very good at that. It's the fact that he's not great with his feet. Mm. Um, Dean Henderson has proven to be a good keeper this year. Obviously, after the restart, Sheffield United dropped off 
massively. Mm. Um, so that Felt could bad for them, you know. I, I mean, I did as well. Chris Wilder, manager of the season, yeah. for me, but not Jurgen Klopp. As much as Jurgen Klopp won the league for Liverpool after 30 years, Chris Wilder and what it he's really done annoys well. me how likable Klopp is. Right? Yeah. Really annoying. He's he's got this sort of old man German charm. I, you, I just what like you make him. Of that? Back and forth between Lampard and oh, I loved it. Yeah, Lampard, yeah. they're all giving it large. Fair play. I mean, they've won the league. I'm not going to no. debate against them on that. But it's why they were trying to this person from the bench trying to give it large to Lampard, and Lampard just can literally just turn around and go, "Sorry, who the fuck are you? Mm, yeah. like, I am Frank Lampard. I yeah. am one of the greatest English midfielders I was, ever." What, what yeah. happened? Was it stuff something that happened afterwards as well? Was there no shaking of the hands or anything? No. You know I love a little bit of drama, so like bring it on, and hopefully. <laughs> It, it it makes, you know, the Chelsea-Liverpool game a little bit more exciting. Agree. I think that it's going to be a massive game this year. Obviously, we've, we've spoken about Zayic, Timo Werner, you know, what's Kai hap- Havertz. To be what's calm. happening with Havertz? I mean, that's literally another one of the questions. According to the star today, Daily Star, believe that as you will. Um, I don't believe it. Uh, well, it's not the sun, but a, 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 same, a, same, same. same level, I know. But according to them, they're not budging on the price tag. It's 90 million or fuck off. Would you spend it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. He's, he's, um, I've got, he's kind of just... I mean, like, look, if it was like an English wonder kid, I would have concerns about it. Mm. <laughs> but the Germans, they <laughs> just fine. always... You this know what I mean? It. This is it. I mean, to, to argue Back against Back a German, case, right? I mean, it's just like, it's going to be, be fair, the fucking mustard, isn't All it? the German scouts are looking at English players. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so <that's they> go- <laughs> <laughs> this so, is very true. Yeah, so Jude Bellingham done that scored. Yeah. It's like you know he's like he scored, didn't he? Yeah, he's supposed to be good as well. They well, also wanted Callum Hudson Adoya. You should come to Bayern München. Yeah. You should come and play for us. Forget the Blues. <laughs> They're not good for you. <laughs> why, why is it descended to this? Um, to Callum Hudson. You started must be going like seeing fucking Bayern just bully Barca and been going. Yeah, I should have gone. Yeah. I mean, would he, would he play for them? I mean, look at that team. He would True. not get in there. True. He's. I mean, he he's... developed there. He turned. Yeah. They would make look him. Look at what they did with Davies. Look at what they did with oh, Kingsley Coman God. out of nowhere. And he's. Yeah, he's not. An... I mean, he was at PSG and Juventus beforehand. That wasn't really. He was. There. He was out of nowhere, mate. He wasn't getting a nod in there. Come on. I mean, he was playing at Juventus. He he played for Juventus against Bayern Munich and knocked him out of the Champions League. All right, fine. He had a game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where was Flick before? I think he was the assistant. Was he just mm. the assistant there? Guess what we're doing, guys. We're just looking it up. <laughs> Can uh, we just talk about the fact that there's two French and two German teams in the Champions League yeah. now? I think and, that's and we're the amazing. <laughs> Who are we calling on that? Bayern. Bayern is favourites. I kind of want to see PSG do it. And it's no, not just because I'm from Paris. I'd I kind of like to see it. I don't, I, this is the thing <laughs> I said before the Atalanta game. Uh, for me, I think Neymar is one of the most overhyped footballers in Europe. Behave! Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I make my case? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> fuck you! No. Um, I think he. So look, as a player, obviously he was fantastic at Barcelona, part of MSN. Um, great website. Used to go on that all the time when I was a kid. Um, Chat to girls. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ping! Please don't ignore me. Um, it was the... So I had... Obviously you had them. He was fantastic there. Knocked PSG out of the Champions League. They then signed Single-handedly, him. Single-handedly, yeah, I'd to, argue. To, to, to be that player. They're like, right, you are the man which is going to take us to Champions League glory. And he has been injured for the last few seasons. And now that he's not injured, look where they are. Yeah, in a one-legged tie, there's always a little asterisk against anything. This yeah, but there's always a little asterisk about your statement just now about he hasn't done it. He's been injured. No, That's quite a big he's, asterisk. He's, no, but he's, he was saying he's, he's been injured and he's even when he's not been injured and he's been playing or I've not been available because it's my sister's birthday. <laughs> yeah. um, it's one of those where it's like... You saw the Atalanta game, yeah? Yeah, I he, was really sad about that. No, sure. It was always nice to see an underdog tr- nearly get there. It's even better to see when they do get there. But he, mate, 
him and Mbappe grabbed that game. Mm. He was an absolute machine in that game. But see, he was, but it's right. Like, so he was, and fantastic that's and that that's game. one example of him being brilliant. The, the problem is, he goes in to be the man. He's then either always injured, or he's not available, or he's having arguments with other, other penalties with people. Then this he's kid got a comes big onto ego the scene. on him. Yeah, but then this kid comes onto the scene and killing Mbappe and takes that stardom away from him. Really. He's not the number one guy anymore. It was now, okay, this is but our But Kylian guy. Mbappe is going to be this generation's best player in the world. Like, oh, 100%, 100%. He is, the, the way we've been talking about Messi and Ronaldo for the last decade and a half, that's Kylian Mbappe. Mm. And let's see who else it is. Maybe Kai Havertz. Who knows? We'd love it. <laughs> it's one of those where, like, I feel, that's why, but that's why I feel that, you know, there's been so many... Maybe Anzu Fati. He's supposed to be really good. He's very good. But there's, there's supposed to be so many things against Neymar's name where it's, okay, you've been brought in to do this, you haven't delivered on that. You've brought in to be the key man and then Mbappe's come and done it. Do you it. think it's all of his, is it his dad or brother's agency? Yeah. Uh, like, I think that's the shit that's clouding mm. what is actually what he's actually doing on the pitch because he, he comes across as a fucking arsehole. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, so I think that's one thing of, like, and I, I get what you mean, but like, is but what I see on the pitch, if we're talking about him being an overrated player, I'm, yeah, behave. Oh, no, he's, he, um, he's, he's, he's he's a great player. I'm not I'm not dis discussing and saying he's not. You know, I I think, but I think that the value he brings. I mean, that Atalanta game is testament against what I'm trying to say. That's why I said I said before the game. Um, he is. He, he only has he has those certain moments where he just isn't at the races. But I mean, I look at he made look, you this can say year that literally this for year, any player. No, no, but, but look, this season he's only made fifteen appearances. I, I grant that he's got thirteen goals and six assists. But I mean, further <laughs> 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 proof to what I'm saying. No, but I could do that in the French league. Everyone, everyone puts so much sort of weight on on the Champions League and how like oh you, you know the, oh the, the, the England and Spain's the 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 leagues are shit. Well, we had every fucking finalist in both yeah. European Cups last season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we haven't fallen off that much. It's a big amount of luck in, yes, the, yeah. in these Huge in these things, and sort of you know whoever gets knocked out uh, in 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 the quarters. It, it, you know, especially this season when it, it mm. was one-legged. Yeah, but this is, I, to be honest, that's another thing. I do love these new one-legged ties. I think that's like, I think it, they're great. It really, yeah, it, it really. Playing on a neutral ground really amp up the mm. tension. I love it. I think, I think that you know how you have one and done. Yeah, all the midweek games that we have for the Champions League now, like you have the group stages midweek, but then you basically move those midweek fixtures. Well, the games that would be in the Premier League, where they'd move them to where the Champions League is in the Cups, and then at the end of the season, you do the knockout rounds. It does mean you're it. going to lose the potential for awesome turnarounds. Yeah. yeah, you'll have the Ajax 4 4s that happen within the game. But remember, like the game I was talking about earlier, Barca beating us 2 1 at the new Camp, yeah. then the 4 2 at the bridge. Yeah. That's gone. So there's pros and cons, but I'm, I'm with you. Barca a couple of years ago. That was a great mm. game. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, it's, it's one of those, isn't it? I mean, obviously, I'm, some people I, say the best Champions no, no, League. No game. doubt with Neymar, I'm going to be, you know, absolutely torn apart in the comment section. But that's what I do this for. Uh, not to get torn apart in the comment section. This I, is a know. guy who doesn't rate Willian, so. I don't rate Willian. Willian, yeah. Willian has been a fantastic servant for Chelsea. Great at getting the ball to the final third. Mm -hmm. Then he just starts basic, basically in his head. He gets the ball to the final third and then screams. He gets it and goes, I don't know what to do. And Alternat passes backwards. Alternatively, he realises that he's that freaking fast and has gone ahead of that many people and the rest of the team hasn't come up and supported him because he's that quick. And he's like, well, okay, fine. I'll I, wait for you to get up I, here. I love William, but I also am... I mean... Just looking at his stats, you just want more goals and assists from a mm. from a yes. forward. That's the only. But I but I can't I can't fault him, and I'd have him for another two seasons. Definitely. I, he's a great squad player and a player that will dig it. I mean, like in our worst season in 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 the last decade, he was the player of the season. Basically, yep. saved us from from pure embarrassment. Yeah, yep. that's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and but, people seem to scapegoat him. You, you're not so bad at this. I've really seen you do it once him. or twice, but I've heard so many people scapegoat him over the years. It's like, if Chelsea play bad, all the heat goes towards William. Mm. 
But then when he does something really good, the uh, the same people won't mention names, but the same people <laughs> will literally say, "Oh no, but that's expected of him." It's like, well, no, come on. Yeah. It's also expected that as a football player, you will have some bad days at the office. That yeah. just goes with the territory. You have to be, you know, you have to be consistent with when you're criticizing and praising. And I just mm. feel like I'm constantly having to defend the guy when he's actually done numbers for us over the years. He's, as yeah. you said, he's a great squad player. He runs his fucking socks yeah. off. And for, you know, and for he's a not a headless. Presses, we, we need players like that. Yeah. He is, mm. he's, he's so high energy. And like, look, there's a reason why Barca were wanting to pay fucking 60 million but, for him. Yeah, and this, and this everyone at Chelsea, oh, take him, take him, take him. It's yes. like, no, don't take him. Why take is, him why is every coach, who? Every coach put, puts him in the side. We can, oh, okay. The reason, like, like we, like we say, get through a lot of coaches. They all love William. Well, he's he's yeah. a good team player. I, I would never doubt that. Like I said, in terms of moving the ball from defence to final third and getting through those transitions, he's fantastic. I'll never fault him. Set pieces, if we go through that, one good free kick a season, the rest of the time, a corner does not go past the first man. Okay, but you never level that criticism at Eden Hazard, and he was equally guilty of that. That's what I mean by inconsistency. I, I, did, I did level it. At no, no, when I, I say you, I don't mean you, oh, Louis Eneventi. I, <laughs> I should have said one dozen. I mean, to be honest. Because I heard that, and I was on that train. I was like, we are shit. At least we were a few seasons. Well, we still are. We're shit at corners. Oh, William, William, William. Eden Hazard much? But William, William was the guy that was taking the corners. So it was Eden there. Hazard. No, but you look, you, what I'm saying is, I think the first time, when, you know when Mason Mount took that first corner, I think it was against Man United, and it actually went in the box, I actually got up off my seat. I was like, oh my oh, God, mate, someone can take a set I, piece. I'm with you, I'm with you. But this is what I'm talking about, the, the lack of consistency with some punditry, because, yeah, William, the scapegoat, does a bad corner. Oh shit, get rid of him, sell him to Barca. Eden Hazard, the untouchable, we don't talk about when he's had a bad game. You, the most you'll hear criticism is, oh, he, he wasn't up to his usual standards. That's the harshest I think I've seen, heard someone be to it I, in Hazard. I, 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 I have genuinely, I think... I, I mean, I, Hazard, I technically, apart from his, like... I mean, that one like, season, 15-16, he's been unreal. I mean, but like, he's, he's not done well at Real this season. Nope. He's uh, he's he 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 should be getting more goals for the type of player he is. He needs to correct. He needs to have that. There you go. Now mentality. we're being consistent. Now we're being Do you know consistent. What I mean? Yeah, that's. True. I love him, but he's kind of too laid back almost. Yeah, no, I agree. And with you that. can you can tell that. In his, and I love him. I love it. I'm very similar. I, I don't really care about stuff that much. Yeah, yeah that's true. It's but true. to be a Ballon d'Or winner or a Real Madrid. To be uh, on Ronaldo player. and Messi level, which is where, with his ability, he, he should, should be. be. Him and Neymar should be the two guys who have taken the mantle from those mm. two and gone, this is ours now. Mm. But it feels like football's almost gone, you're both fucking excellent, but Mbappe. It's yeah. kind of skipped them almost. I mean, I think, I think that's also down to the fact that Messi and Ronaldo have also been so consistent for such yeah. a sustained yeah. period for of so time. Long and I like think... This. And Ronaldo's going mean, to keep going, man. It, he's going to keep Can we just say, going. there's one guy we haven't spoken about with a Ballon d'Or and he's been robbed of it this year because I'm not doing it, and that is Robert Lewandowski. Mm. He's been... Oh, Levin, Robert Lewandowski. <laughs> Le yeah, Levin, Levin, Robert Lewandowski. <laughs> I, I, was so, I wanted to send that to you like, oh, you get me? Let's have some. Lewandowski, <laughs> for me, has been, and I don't, I, I include Aguero, Suarez, I don't give a fuck. For the last few years now, Lewandowski has been the best striker in the world for me. I'd, I'd, I'd pay, I don't care if he's 30, because you look at his body, he's like... Is he, he only 30? He's only 30, 31. 31. He, and he does, um, he does Muay Thai, doesn't he? Whereas his wife is a Muay Thai champion. His wife's, his, does, his wife's a kickboxer, karate girl. Yeah, um, and he, and he does it, like what, what, Thai kickboxing or something. Did he, he used to play for um, Dortmund. Dortmund and like banged three in uh, yeah. three minutes or 11 minutes yeah. against... He was, Fun, fun, yeah, funny story about him with that as well. When he was at Lake Poznan, is that how you say it? Poznan, yeah. Lake Poznan. Um, when he was at Lake Poznan, you know he was going to move to Blackburn and then that Icelandic volcano stopped him from doing it. Can you wow. imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine got? him at Blackburn? Him and uh, Roque Santa Cruz on the, in that season. Can you imagine the player oh they would have got, God. man? Where's Lake Poznan? Poland. Okay. Um, Mrs. is Polish. Ah, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> 
But yeah. Did you know they don't like him in Poland? They rate him, but they, they give him continuous shit about, oh, you're doing this, you're doing that, you should be playing football. It's like, he is! They don't, they don't, Stop giving it's, your it's, idol it's, shit! It's when he started doing TikTok and winking down the camera that I've got. Oh, it. leave it out. You no, can but do if what someone the looks fuck at you he wants. Did, did, did. Hey. It's like, yeah, that's when I'd be a if bit someone's like, going to no. pay me millions to do TikTok and allow me a platform on which I can score 54 goals in one... T- I mean, this is... We're getting close to messy numbers here, man. 54 goals in a season. He's ridiculous. He's unreal. I think with, with that as well, though, I think, you know, he, he's How a good of Bayern. Yeah. Just... But I said at the beginning of the season, you testament to this. I said Gnabry and Lewandowski are going to rip people apart in the Champions and, and League. they've still got Leroy Sane. Gym. Oh, it's terrifying. Oh my god. It's that, terrifying. That team you've got. And, so- and wait, no one fucking talks about Thomas Muller. Yeah. Eleven goals. He, he's so damn good. He's so and he good. has been for what? He, how old is he? He's been around for ages yeah, he's now. 30, man. Because they were trying like, to get rid of him. They were like, they were thinking, oh, cool. Oh, man. And then he's just had the season of his still, life. I'd take Thomas Muller at Chelsea. Can you imagine him? In a heartbeat. Oh. Uh, do, you know, do you know who I was really cut? We didn't get it when they got Muller him. or De Bruyne? Oh, De Bruyne. Oh, De Bruyne. All day. De but, Bruyne. You know, I think one player I was gutted we didn't get, and I really wish we had when he went to Bayern because he got him on a free, was Leon Goretzka. I was Oh, Leon Goretzka is a class act, man. He's unreal. Uh, they've done it again, Bayern. They've just built a team for the next X amount of years. And you know what's going to happen. Muller's going to go. Lewandowski will get old. You know, once they've reached their peak... They'll have some other fucking They've young got, yeah. twat come through their academy. They'll, mm. they'll have the next Muller. I imagine they've probably already got him lined up and we don't know about yeah, him they've yet. They've got uh, Jan Fieter Arp, who they signed from uh, Hamburg. Don't supposedly. know who that is. So and I he, imagine he's, he's, the next, he's been like said to be the next Lewandowski. See, we talk so about good. you know Barca's academy and we talk about all these well, great look, teams in the world. The academy's gone to shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when but people we, talk about it, it's but like we Chelsea talk about all the great right. teams. For me, the team who have got the best model in football is Bayern. They but, but buy the right been... players at the right price. They breed their own players. They let them develop. They, they've they're just so well organized. Think, they're fucking it's, German. They're, the kind, they're so they're well kind, organized, they're, they're top all, to bottom. The, the old sort of United of Germany, aren't they? Just yeah. sort of just hoover up all the best German talent, and they kind of just yeah. agree to go there. Well, yeah. but can, I say, can I tell you what? I can see that. How are we doing for time, by the way? We're about an hour. Know. Yeah, cool. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll move on to the player of the season stuff shortly. I just, I'm really in, in No, 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 I'm into this. Don't get um, me wrong. I'm just wondering. I, I think that... Um, so, you look you look at how they're modelling it. I can almost see the way Chelsea have done it, this transfer. And I know it's only been one window. I'm not going to sit here and go, we're going to do it. It's kind of like... Oh, we've got you a can long see, way to go. Yeah, we've we got a long way that. to go. But you can see the Liverpool model, which I think has been the best model for the past few years, and it's been materialised with a Champions League mm-hmm. and a Premier League title. Yep. Um, I think that if you look at how... Two Champions League finals. I two remember Champions that. Two Champions League finals, yeah. Um, I think that, you know, where they've done that, and they've, we've also got the buy model where we've brought, breed, we're breeding these young players and then we're going, okay, well, these are good young players, but this is where we need to improve and you can't grow that. So Tammy Abraham, you've had a fantastic season, 15 goals. I think he's the only player apart from Mbappe and Jadon Sancho to have scored all 15, like 15 plus goals from open play. Okay. Uh, under the age of 22. And uh, so he's done really well, but it's like, okay, <laughs> you've done really well. I, but... I laugh because you know, Mbappe, Sancho, Abraham, one of these things does not belong. <laughs> no, but it's, you know, it's, it's true. But, it's, but, but it's then, you know, it's, you could have said the same thing about Sancho before he went and had a couple of seasons and Definitely. got confidence. Yeah, Hudson, Definitely. Hudson Odoi was rated higher than him. Yeah. Hudson Odoi was like, okay, you got Hudson Odoi, Sancho, you want every single coach that I want Hudson Odoi. Yeah. Like Sancho. But that, Sancho but, and that's the thing. thing. I mean, like, I, and I know where you're going with this. Like, Abraham's, have you hit your ceiling? I don't think he has. Well, no. Okay, fine. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because I don't think, I think you need to give players a chance. You can't write them off. No. You need to uh, ha- have a, a squad that is competitive in every position. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I think we were getting that, especially with the forwards. You know, like Yeah, the forward oh, line. This is fact- Pulisic, yeah. Hudson-Odoi, Werner, Abraham, it's, it's the selection. Ziyech, it's if he comes Havertz, you know? Mount. I, I yeah. This thing, this, this is why, like, that's one of the reasons I wouldn't sign Havertz and I maybe... Are we going to get Ben Rama? Are we... Are we... No, that won't happen now. That won't happen. Oh, he, he's so good, though. 
He's so good. Who's he, is he, who's he going to go to? Or is he going to stay at Brentford? I he can't stay in the he Championship. He won't stay at Brentford. I think what well, Ollie Watkins, I think, might be going to Brighton. Uh, I think that. Uh, they've got this, they're called BMW their front line you've got Ben Rama Watkins and then uh, I've forgotten the other guy's name but I think Ben Rama will go to Premier League who is another question I think you're going to try to see if we can find somebody there who's probably not got that in the right position I think Everton would be a good fit for Ben Rama I think that right wing you know you've got Iwobi or Walcott I unless don't think much competition leads. There. unless I've missed something do you know who I think needs to get bought out from a team that's just been relegated Todd bloody Cantwell he is superb. He's a good player, but when you look at you, go. There was always the conversation. Oh, I love Wendia. He's a but player. But then again, who's he good. doesn't have. I mean, I know he's playing at Norwich, but he's a great player, but he's, he's not delivering with mm. the goals or assists. But Cantwell is a workhorse. That's the thing I rate him for. He does was, not it was, stop it was running. Him, it was him, Grealish, and Mount that were kind of okay. Who's better out of these three? And obviously, Jack Grealish is leaps and bounds. Yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. But. Like you look at if you look at Todd Cantwell, where would he go? Where he'd be like he'd be okay, walk straight into the team and be a different Wolves. Piece. Wolves. I could put Todd Cantwell in Wolves. He was linked with Spurs. Cre- just okay. just going back on what Mooch was saying just now about how create competition, right? Within the team. Cantwell Is that why they bought hot. <laughs> Um, but no, Cant- Cantwell at Wolves, you know, give give their midfield a run. I think he'd do really well there, considering who's managing Wolves at the moment. It's true. It's true. I don't know. I'm yeah. not. I'm not. You know, campaigning for him to become a Chelsea player. Mm. That's not what I'm saying. Although, don't get me wrong, squad player. If everyone's injured, so he, he, he runs his socks if, off. If you're but... signing Havertz, I mean, this is the thing. I think you're going to be looking at players like, and then. Twitter is a prime place for this. You want people to want Mason Mount being, oh, you know, I, I don't think... I that to, do you remember when we good. were in a pomp and we we had Steve Sidwell? <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when we signed Steve Sidwell? It was kind of like, great, you're, but you're not really going to do anything here. You've got the number nine show. Mikel yeah. Forsell. <laughs> I quite God. like that. It was it Icelandic? Yeah. <laughs> we had, um, it was the, it was in the same way we signed Steve Sidwell, we signed Tal Ben Hayun, and I think we signed Yossi Ben Ayun as well. I rated Yossi Ben Ayun. Yossi yeah. Ben Ayun was all right. He was a workhorse. Yeah. I like Yossi Ben Ayun. But it's one of those where it was like, but I think, yeah, right, right now with what's happening at Chelsea, Todd Cowan wouldn't fit. But I think you're. No, 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 at, no. I'm not, as I said, I'm not campaigning. Yeah. Him going to a Wolves, or maybe like you said in Everton, maybe a Sheffield. He do really, really well there because yeah. he is he who, is Premier League level. Who, have we? I know we kind of touched on it previously, but I don't know if we touched on it today. But our defense is what we need to. We well, yeah, exactly. Really... But this is why I'm saying have Havertz, pl- apparently best player of his generation in terms of that year, according to Rudy Vola, campaigning for a high fee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you will pay us some money, or he will not I, go. I got this from I got this from a. <laughs> <laughs> Right, come here, you. Um, I, I know, but this again, I got this fifty plus one Bayern fan. You know, talks to me about it, and he was saying like, look, like he can play. He's he's not when people say he can play on the wing and all that. He can't really. He said he can play as a second striker. Yes, he's played up front four by Leverkusen. and he's played more in the ten, a little bit in the eight. So he's more of a centralized player. He drifts player. to the right. He drifts, but it's one of those where it's like, okay, if we're doing that, where does he fit in this team? We've just signed Werner. We've just signed Ziyech. Both of them first names on the team sheet, hundred percent. Are you going to drop Olivier Giroud after the amazing well, I think campaigns? I think probably be the first team, well, first name of the team. But over, over who? Mason Mount, who's Frank Lampard's golden boy. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, but look, Mason Mount's been played on the wing. Yeah. Fit and fully functioning, not based three. on what the season has just been, but fit and fully functioning. I don't see anyone other than N'Golo Kante being the first name on the team sheet. That's that's just me. For but me... I, I'm not... I, I disagree Whoa. with that. Ooh, fight, argument. Fight, fight. No, no, as in like, I'm, Rem- like... I said fit and fully functioning, not yeah. how he is I'm, I'm in current good. form. I agree with you, but I don't know if if it's in Frank's plans to like he's the. Do you not see N'Golo Kante having a future? No, I do see him having a future with I us. Think, I mean, I don't think he's the first. Oh. Okay, I'm going to say something now. I know what you're going to say. I don't rate N'Golo Kante. No, I do rate N'Golo Kante. I just think based on the season he's had where Here he's just not been up to scratch. Obviously, fit and fully Injured. functions a different, different beast. Yeah, but even when he's had like three or four months out and he's come back, he's not looked like the same player. And I think in the way that we play, 
he is not a he's not an anchor defensive midfielder. He's an interceptive midfielder. Mm-hmm. Mm. And we don't play with an interceptive midfielder. We need an anchor. Correct. And maybe six. that's what needs to change because when we did play with an anchor, we were much harder to beat. Yeah, but can't say. So it's not just it. my problem is it's not just the defense. It's who's first of we as we said earlier, who's behind that defense. Like we need an Allison, one Edison, who's filling the players with confidence, who's in front of them. Because Jorginho, as good as he is as a regista, does not fill me with confidence. No, I agree. Do you see Jorginho staying? I would personally sell him. But only, right. only... But who's buying him now that Sarri's been booted from Juve? I think, well, apparently Juve is still interested. Um, really? Yeah. He's he'd be a great player. I mean, he's proven to I be mean, a great player in the Italian league. Pirlo over at Juve now is is fascinating. Mm. It's they've very much done a Lampard, haven't they? Mm. They've picked a player who was brilliant, but they, they've picked a man who is brilliant got, as a they, player. They've got, a, they've got they've brought in Ronaldo, and they have to build a team around Ronaldo. Otherwise, what's the point in having Ronaldo there? Mm. And he is going to be around for a while still. I maintain and, that and he might be going to PSG. Ronaldo. I know. I thought that I might be a bit like, I'm mm, not sure about that. That's only, I think that's what hinges on if Neymar gets a move away, which is what he's asking for. I could see Ronaldo moving to PSG if Winning he the helps. title there and then win. If he gets the, exactly. If he wins the Champions League at Juve, then he's done it at Real. I think he did it at United, did didn't United, he? Did then I could Juve. see him going to another league, be it Bayern or some, or, yeah, be it Bayern. I was going Ronaldo at Bayern. <laughs> Terrifying. Here's every single trophy. Enjoy it. We'll see you where next year. Where would he year. play there? Centre forward. That's, yeah. that, 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 no, that'll be if Lewandowski goes. Right, I'm on the way. And despite Ronaldo being older, he's got like I Ronaldo think, has got a lot of left yeah. in the tank. Apparently, Ronaldo's got like the metabolism of like a 22 year old. Yeah. I have the metabolism of a 40 year old. So you know, if we could switch bodies, see you on that'd be great. Um, I think you know he's a yeah he he'd be a different beast over there. Him worried. at Bayern, I could see him going to France because he's got that kind of Mourinho mentality. Maybe it's a Portuguese thing about how I've won it here, I want to yeah. win it there, I want to win it there, I want to win it there. It's the winner's mentality, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's a big if, but if Juve can win the Champions League with him, that will be when he leaves. Yeah, I think I think Juve won't do it. They weren't going to do it under Sarri. No. If they do it under Pirlo. I was no, they're not going to do it under nah, Pirlo. I was speaking to a load of Italians about it today and they all just went, nah. He said he will be gone within six months. Oh, Pirlo. Yeah. 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 I, I'd, I'd, I'd put that down to him being gone would be probably down to the fact that even though Juve have done a Lampard, it's still a case of, right, they are in the they mentality of every we course. win. Yeah. Um, and and so oh, fucking into looking pretty tasty. I love just a bit, right? Yeah. Oh, but I mean, Although, Conte is... Oh, Conte is so a good. very good manager. Conte, Conte plays shit football. He's a boring manager. He's just with that manager. Conte, Conte's... Conte, Conte, my world issue world with it, Antonio manager. Conte that I raised with you repeatedly is that he was stubborn. It yeah. wasn't oh. that he played boring football or that he was a bad manager. He was stubborn. He couldn't see when he was clearly doing something that the whole stadium could see was wrong. It's like, you look at the Bournemouth and Watford games the legendary losses that we had against them literally back to back back a yoko in the middle of the park didn't work the was that, whole was that conte was that that was conte oh, yeah. no but that like, was no, but... conte that was the guy he bought that was the guy that he put his trust in and that was the guy who had who was just a headless chicken and that was my issue with conte it's that he didn't have a plan b mm. and he was stubborn because the way he had to set up the 343 three, essentially the way he had the four set up, in my opinion, it negated having any type of attack in midfield because you're two wide men. So the two wide four were wing backs. Mm. So they were still very defensive minded, even though they were encouraged to get forward. And the two central players, Bakayoko and uh, Kante. So it was all ultra defensive. So teams figured out really quickly, clip Chelsea's wings. Just, just like they did with Scolari. The moment they figured out Scolari and Conte, you clip the wings of Chelsea. No take, plan B, it seems. No, no plan B. And then he was completely... Apart from Hazard. <laughs> apart from Hazard. You know, Hazard, save us. Or Diego Costa, but save it's, it's us. The, the problem that he had, though, as well at Chelsea was... He was stubborn. It was, he was stubborn, but he goes, right, with a team that finished 10th the season before, you've just gone and won the league. If you were right in a marina, I would have turned around, like they've done at Inter, and mm. they're slowly going to see the reaping of the rewards. Right, EG1, we will go and get him at all costs. Mm. He's gone and signed Lukaku at Inter. 
turn into a beast. Yes, he maybe was poor he at Manchester United. He already was a beast, mate. No, but, you know, but he's turned into even more a beast. Like, at Manchester United, he's a lot not of his, too much. And then he, a lot of his sightings, though, have been questionable other than Lukaku. Not in terms of the player names, but look at Ericsson. He hasn't had a good season at Inter. He's mm. four goals, three assists, I believe. He's barely played. That's not true either. He's had over 20 games in all competitions, mate. Has he? But yeah, I believe... Fact check me on that, but I'm pretty sure I'm spot on with that. He's had four goals, three assists, or maybe other way around. The standout marquee signing for Conte has been his man Lukaku, but a mm. lot of his other players that mm. he's brought in have been. Hmm. He doesn't like this. Um, it look, oh, the the defender with a funny Slavic name. The, did you see my tweet yesterday? Is that why the um, <sighs> Mi- Milan Skriniar? Skriniar. That is a player we're talking about centre backs. He's not had the best season at Inter. I think that's also down to his relationship with Conte. Yeah, I don't Hence, think they yeah. I think he might be off. Yeah. Mm. Forty million pounds they're quoting, and he's supposed to be one of the best up and coming. I, I'm not gonna lie, I've, I've not watched enough of him. No one know me. No I, I when people are talking about a sign up like Upa Meccano, great. I, yeah. I think he'd be superb. But Milan Skriniar, oh my god, but I if would Conte in a doesn't want him. No, but Conte didn't want um what was it? Who's players that play? He didn't want Willian, he didn't want Diego Costa, he huh? didn't want yeah, him and Willian fell out. Him oh yeah, Diego, they did massively, yeah, didn't yeah. they? Him and yeah, him yeah. and Diego Costa fell out. Diego no, Diego Costa, Costa won. Diego out. Costa fell out with everyone who he came in touch with, yeah. mate. Let's <laughs> Diego Costa has the biggest chip on his shoulder. No, but, no, but this, no that's not tr- strictly true. Like apparently you speak you've been you I speak felt people. like I was in prison. Yeah. Come with, on. With with, with um, Go to China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was one of those, but it's like you look there that's the thing you had. But I mean you like you look at other players as well that have kind of apparently Hazard fell out with Conte. Conte had a good relationship with the staff. Conte was volatile. You could tell that. You could tell by the way he celebrated. You you got an in, a hint of that by the way he got rid of Diego Costa. You're not in my plans anymore. Done in text message. You know, maybe he wasn't the best man manager. Tactically, he was very astute, but I maintain stubborn and no plan B. Hmm. But yeah, I think I think Inter doing well. But I mean, with with you, babe, it'd be interesting. It's mad. This podcast is supposed to be at Chelsea. We've gone. We've gone to the Bundesliga. It's a football we've gone podcast. To it's been fantastic. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, obviously what? with Chelsea, what are we wrapping up with? We've done that. We've got. We're obviously spoken about what the process is. Spoken about the season. What we think our favorite games are. Now I think we'll do the uh, the Chelsea Echo Player Awards. Amanda. <laughs> Yay! Um, <laughs> Yeah, so obviously player of the season, young player of the season, surprise package. Mm. And then we'll get into a little bit of transfer news, which we haven't covered. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll round off with some questions. Sounds good. So, player of the season, gentlemen, put your thoughts to the floor, please. Um, I'm pr- It's between two players. Yeah. Christian Pulisic is Can't one of them. <laughs> Pulisic and, 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 and Mount, it's got to be. Yeah. Kovacic? No, I'd put him down as a surprise of the season because he upped his game so much. I, I, for, for me personally, or I'd, maybe Billy I'd Gilmore was a surprise of the season. My, so my my player and young player of the season, I go Mount for player of the season because mm-hmm. of the consistency of what he's done, how well he's been. I would have argued for Mateo Kovacic if we hadn't had the restart. I think the restart kind of obviously he's been everyone, brilliant. He's been, he's been fantastic this year for us. My young player would be Christian Pulisic. Even though they're both exactly, pretty, they're exactly the same age, but only because I want to try and squeeze him. He scored what eleven goals and he got ten assists. Oh, and class, he's just been—he's—he's he's the player oppositions are frightened of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would not want to he's play against him. Unplayable at, at points, and it's, yeah, it's—he's you know he's going to be a worldie, a worldie as long as he can mm. stay injury free, which is something I just worry about. I'd be mad. I think I think of quality, but I think with. Yeah, so that, that those would be my twenty anyway, surprise package. I think Mateo Kovacic is definitely or Billy patient. Gilmore. Or you could go the other way around and go like Rudiger, and he's like, been surprisingly terrible. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Preach. I think yeah, I think yeah, I'd argue that personally. I'm trying to stay as upbeat as possible, so I think cover. I if it was down to me to make the decision, I'd go Kovacic surprise package because mm. of. Under, under how much he say, upped his game sorry, I, sorry I, I, stunted his growth so much as a player, I always, I've always opinion. rated Kovacic I've always rated really him I don't think yeah. he's been but but the the, the the jump from one season to the next like yeah. he was mm. he was fine he was serviceable you know he would 
do a... Was, a, was that his... I suppose the second season because yeah. he was on loan. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. But like, in, in the first season, there was the first two games you could see this brutish nature about him where he'd go and... Proper ball to Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'd, he'd go for people, win the ball, recycle it really well. Mm. would be great going forward. It'd be him and Loftus-Cheek as kind of your two number eight roles, basically. Yeah. Uh, but then, throughout as the season went on, sorry, obviously you had. So, and there's again, this is me. I personally, at least, not his growth. People will disagree. I agree. That's fine. I agree. That's one of those where sorry, obviously had a Starry very specific stunted way. Chelsea. Frankly, yeah, he had he had a very specific way of playing. Which I, sorry has to, like so, I I sorry is not a, a manager for a club who have expectations of winning things instantly. Nope. He's a he's a he's a manager who you can put in like a sleeping giant who will develop a side who will be really competitive and may win things in two, three, four years once yeah. he's instilled his system in it. So Napoli was perfect for yeah, him. Exactly. Cool, send him to Tottenham Newcastle. could probably be... You know what I mean? Send him to Newcastle. <laughs> fair, I mean, send if Newcastle got the budget, then yeah, 100%, I think that would have been a good move for him. But I think with, with the problem with him is he, he always had a very specific way of playing. The players, if you speak, listen to Rob Green's interviews and stuff, he's like, he got, got every player got sick of Sarri's you know, mentality and how it always went through stuff. Oh, you, you look so at, boring and yeah, negative. You, 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 look at, you look at, but if you look at the Europa League final, when we finally got playing properly, yeah. under that, we were superb. It didn't work out. That's fine. One game doesn't buy the parsnips, mate. No, exactly. But I think if you if you look at it, then you go right. Next season, Lampard comes in. Similar style of football, very aggressive, very attacking, very possession based. But instead of having one specific way, he basically turned to the players and went, "Right, boys, we've got a transfer ban. Not really much expectations. Let yourself go." And with that, it kind of you saw Kovacic come into his own with that and take control. The Kovacic people spoke about Bayern, Inter. Real Madrid. This is the player that we started to mm. see, and he's and for, for the reason that was uh, that's my he's my surprise package because when we signed him for forty million, I was kind of sitting going, "You sure? Like, are we just doing that because we need to sign players because of what's mm. going on?" Or there was a part of me good. that felt like we got a bit baited into that as part of the Hazard deal, also. Yeah. Um, but he honestly, he he's he's stepped up. Mm. He has stepped up, and that's why I'm with he's you on that. So press resistant and just like. Tenacious, yeah, yeah, his quality. That's that, that's that's my thing, anyway. But I mean, obviously, this isn't my podcast. This is well, you kind of stole mine, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree. So, with you that. went with Pulisic. So, what was your I went Mount Player of the Year, Pulisic yep. Young Player of the Year, Kovacic is the surprise I'll switch package. it around. I'll go Pulisic Player of the Year, Mount Young Player of the Year. They're all fucking kids, <laughs> not fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> Adam uh, Johnson. No, yeah. oh, well, <laughs> there goes monetization. Editing. Um, <laughs> you can um, have fun with that edit. And um, surprise, I, I'll go with Billy Gilmore. Billy Gilmore, yeah. Because yes. I, I Big wasn't, uh, you know, surprised how fucking great he was before injury. Mm. Yep. But yeah, I think well, that's that's it really, isn't it? We've done that. Should we get into some questions? Mm. Yeah, go for it. Right. So I just put this out on Twitter. Just ask some questions. Uh, <laughs> some we've already answered, so we'll quickly just glaze through these. Um, obviously, I'm trying to find the tweet because currently I've just you know put a tweet out where I was really upset yesterday because I got Domino's cookies mm. for my dinner. Really happy about it. Come down to the kitchen today. They're all fucking gone. I hate my family. <laughs> <laughs> um, player of the season prediction we've done from Jordan. Where's Havertz? Ideal left back signing we've covered. Um, oh, interesting. What we got? So Dan Locke says, assuming that Chua and Havertz both arrive, if you could sign one more player, who would it be? Declan Rice, Yano Black, or Jaden Sancho, and he's put etc. So if there's it's not, else, it's not even a question. Or Jan or Black. Jan yeah. or Black. Agreed. Easiest question I've ever been asked, maybe. Yeah. It was fine. Okay, cool. Next. <laughs> I, think, I think Oblak will make our defenders better. Of course yeah. he will. Of course That's he it. bloody will. Best keeper in the world. Do you know who was good recently? I don't know if it was a one-off, but the, the, I can't even remember his name. The Copenhagen keeper against United. Oh, superb. What a game Jan- he Jansen, had. Or J- Johansson or whatever his name Jansen, is. Jensen, Jansen. Something Sun. Well, I mean, even even uh, UT's frontman Bono was great in goal. <laughs> Brilliant! I was, I, can't, I can't believe you. But by, by day, you know, lead singer of a band, does a lot of charity work. By night, he's in goal for Sevilla against Man United. It's amazing. So the Copenhagen keeper. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, next one. Uh, uh, let's not do that one. Come back to it another time. That's a whole like. 
podcast to itself. Um, we'll keep table that one then, yeah. Yeah, this one here, yeah, about mm. the stadium. We will answer that uh, article. Just give us, give us a little bit. Uh, who, in your opinion, will be wearing the number ten and number eleven shirts next year? Mount and Pulisic, probably. I yeah, think. definitely. Yeah. Matt and Pulisic. I'd oh, probably wait, hang on. What about Havertz? Oh no, again? hasn't Werner been given? Oh, sorry, the 11? yeah, Werner's been given the eleven. Now it stands at number ten. So will it? Will that be Pulisic or will that be Mason Mount? Was, was Werner given? The Do you know what yeah, I yeah. think needs to happen? They need to take that fucking number eight shirt away from Ross Barkley. Yeah. Give it to Mason Mount, and give ten to Pulisic. I agree. With that. Mason Mount is a number eight. Exactly. He he's he is Frank Lampard's boy. He should be Frank Lampard's. He should have Frank Lampard's number. That's true. Yeah. Could, will they be able to hear that? Probably. Fantastic. <laughs> Just, we're right. We're, 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 Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um. Just, <laughs> I can't um, wait for the studio to come. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. But yeah, that, I think that's it. We're, the other, other questions are a little bit, and we'll, we'll, we can touch on them in another podcast. But I think okay, we've touched on all the rest as well. So those are the questions. So obviously, let me know. Number 10, number 11 shirts. We should have it. Should Ross Barkley lose number eight? Who we should get rid of? I think that'd be the next podcast, wouldn't you? Who when should we get rid of? Yeah, I think I think, I think think we should definitely talk about... Kepper and Rudiger. Players get rid of. I mean, and Zuma. I mean, there's a long list. I'm talking about loanees as well. Players that are out on loan. Van Ginkle. Thank you so much. <laughs> Can't be mean to Marco. He's been injured, but like, come on, mate. It's, it's you're not going to get in our midfield. No, never. Just I was gutted for him because he was actually quality. Yeah, he is a good player, but quality. He can be quality somewhere else. Let him go. Yeah, set him I, free. I, I think only we gave him a one year deal, but I think we only gave him a wrong. Well, gave him a one year deal because of his injuries, just so he could recover. Fair so we're we're, we're a lovely club. We're a lovely club. But uh, but yeah, I mean that's that's the thing in terms of questions. We've covered everything in terms of transfers as well. I think Ben White. We spoke a little bit about it, didn't we? But briefly touched on, made we Mooch didn't... laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. We didn't talk about the defenders really. We didn't talk about Dunk this week. It's true. We didn't talk about. We talked about. Well, we spoke about our defense, I guess. But no, yeah. d- Dunk. Nah, pass. No, wouldn't take him. Not if White's not if White's available. Absolutely not. White. White. Great. I'd say Ben White. Personally, I'm I'm still very firmly on the uh, Thiago Silva train. You very you you firmly. ride you ride that train, mate. You I, ride that I was train. The, I listen. I am the. It's conduct- a steam train. It's, it's like a- it's, oh, it's done. It's old. It's like it's, it's a coal train. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I was the conductor of the uh, Ben Chilwell train. You got Yannick who was you know driving it. Hang on, dry run man was Tagliafico. Now he's flying no, the no, Ben Chilwell. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 no, 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 yeah. What are you yeah. talking about? Back again. No, no. I mean, for, <laughs> for, for me, I think, look, Ben Chilwell is a better option based on the price tags now. Tally Fico, it's like, yeah, take I literally God, have there was you, nothing in there. I literally <laughs> have you on tape saying Tally Fico. Whatever. Exactly. Whatever. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, like, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of... Look, we, we just need a new left back. We need a left back. We need a centre back. We need an old keeper. That's the podcast. That's the first yeah. one. Done. <laughs> We're done. Yay. Uh, yeah. So obviously, if you're on the YouTube channel, check it out. Mooch, do the podcasty bits. Um, find us, uh, listen to us where you listen to any good podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Um, Stitcher? What's that? It's a podcasting. Castbox, Deezer, yeah. Podchaser. Acast, yeah. All of that jazz. Um, but if you're watching this on YouTube... Uh, do drop a subscription below, exactly. tickle that bell, and uh, leave us a comment. Very nice. <laughs> tickle the bell. Tickle the bell. I like that. Tickle the bell. I like that. Tickle the bell. That's very good. Make that a thing. Yeah. yeah we'll t- are we going to get it, tickle t- the- get it on t shirts of tickle no. the bell? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and Nico, you got anything you want to plug? Anything I want to plug? Yes, uh, you can catch me every Sunday on the Movie Mount Rushmore podcast. As I said, we do a new top 10 show every single week. Uh, We put a fan selection out once a month too, so you guys can actually decide what top 10 you'd like us to cover. Really, really geeky, but if you like wrestling, that's another thing I cover. You can follow the Ministry of Wrestling podcast. That's now up to a few hundred followers, so that's every Saturday. You can check us out there. Emma W News on Twitter and Movie MT Rushmore on Twitter. And yeah, you can obviously check out my channel as well. Obviously, this first one's kind of going to, we're going to be on its own channel and all that. So make sure you follow that as well. And uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway. So, you know, obviously, I'll leave all of the important stuff for that in the uh, description. I want a shirt. I want a shirt. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can win a shirt. Yeah? <laughs> so make sure you subscribe and give us a five star review on, uh, on podcasty things. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Do, do that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tickle yeah. the bell. <laughs> tickle, tickle the bell. It's okay, guys. We'll see you later. Ladies. <laughs> Oh dear, tickle the bell. Tickle the bell.